All you need to get started with the same modern observability tools that companies are using all around the world is a Raspberry Pi and some Docker containers. I'll show you how to turn a simple Raspberry Pi into a real observability node using OpenTelemetry, Prometheus, and Grafana. And I'll take you through the entire process from setting up our Raspberry Pi to our WSL Ubuntu instance, all the way to the Grafana graphs that you just saw. That being said, let's go engineer some stuff. And thanks to my slightly improved art skills, let's visualize what we'll be building. My Raspberry Pi is running an open telemetry collector in Docker, which scrapes system metrics and sends them over to Prometheus, running in my WSL Ubuntu instance. Prometheus and Grafana run together inside a Docker bridge network, connecting the namespaces so they can talk to each other just like services would in a real production environment. And this setup allows Grafana to connect to Prometheus and visualize all those metrics in real time with excellent monitoring. On our Raspberry Pi, we're going to make the directory called otelpy and cd into it. And if we print the working directory with a PWD, we can see we're in our correct directory for otelpy. Doing an ls in our otelpy directory, we'll see two files I've created, a docker compose and an otel config yaml. Both of these will be breaking down now in the next step. Our config file tells the open telemetry collector what to collect, how to process it, and where to send it. If we look at our file, we have four main sections, receivers, processors, exporters, and servers. Starting with receivers, this is the eyes and ears of our setup. We have a collection interval of five seconds, which means every five seconds we'll be scraping our metrics. Just be aware if you set a lower metric in terms of time, like two seconds, it will use significantly more CPU intensive resources. Our path is this because the host file system is mounted within the container, and then our scrapers, these are the categories of data that we'll be looking at, which will be CPU, memory, disk, file system, network, the load intervals, processes, and the paging data. For our exporters, aka how we want to export the data and so we can gather our metrics, we'll be using Prometheus and we'll be looking at the endpoint 000, which will be listed on any IP and incoming traffic request to that on port 8889. All processors means is that it's going to take a bunch of requests that we do to our metrics and batch group them together. This will save us bandwidth and make it easier to the data to be processed and filtered. Lastly, for the service section, we're mainly concerned with the receiver, which is going to be the host metrics coming in from the system, how it's going to deal with them, which is the batch processor that we talked about just last step, and then the exporters, which again is using Prometheus and the endpoint of where it's going. When we look at our Docker Compose file, we can see it contains a single service called Otel, but we could name this whatever we like. For our image, we're specifically using the Open Telemetry Collector Contrib image, as this has the host metrics exporter in collection that we need. Container name, calling it Otel Pi, so we'll know it's from the Raspberry Pi. Restart it unless it's stopped. And now these next two pieces are very important. For the network mode, we're gonna use host and the PID host. This is so it collects the metrics and the network data from the Raspberry Pi itself, not from inside the containers. And our volumes map the config we just went over in the last step to the container file that has the config inside that. Lastly, we're defining two commands. The first one, dash dash config, is pointing to our exact config YAML file that we use to pass in and will map from our host volume to the containers volume. And then setting the log level to debug makes it much easier to figure out where our service is and where the open telemetry collector went wrong in the event that something went wrong. Let's get our open telemetry collector going by doing docker compose up dash D to run in detached mode. This just means the container will run in the background. After docker compose says the container is started, we can do docker compose PS. And this way we can see that our container has been created 22 seconds ago and it's up for 18 seconds. And now we can use this to start to pull for the open telemetry collector metrics to test if it's working. By doing a curl request to our localhost port 889 slash metrics then, we'll be presented with numerous different statistics and data that we can see that the host metrics has collected for us. All these metrics represent real data that is being scraped every five seconds, the interval we set in our config file, and ranges from everything like we talked about, from CPU to network information, disk IO, and all kinds of helpful stuff. While getting this information locally is great, let's make sure we can get this from our WSL instance as this will be the basis for our Grafana and Prometheus dashboard that we're going to set up. To get our Raspberry Pi's address, we can do IP-4 for IPv4, dash BR for brief, address show dev WLAN 0. If you're using the Ethernet, replace this with E0. 
In our WSL Ubuntu instance now, we can repeat the same curl command, except this time, instead of doing localhost, we're going to substitute our Raspberry Pi's IP, which in my case would be 10.0.0.114. Obviously, use your IP address, which will be different than mine. Then, when we actually run our curl command, we can see the same metrics and outputs that we collected from the previous step when we were running for localhost, except this time, we're actually running from WSL, and this is the basis that we'll use to collect from Prometheus and then in Grafana. To start getting the WSL side of things set up, we'll make a directory and cd into it called Otel WSL. And if we print to the working directory, we can see we're in Otel WSL. Doing an ls, we can see we have Docker Compose and a Prometheus.yaml file. Our Docker Compose YAML file will be how we get Grafana and Prometheus up and running. And then our Prometheus YAML file will be the exact Prometheus config that we're going to use for our stats configuration. Catting the output of the Prometheus YAML file, it's broken down into two main sections, global and scrape config. For global, we're we're only defining the scrape interval, which in our case is 5 seconds, and matches what we configured on the Otel YAML file on the Raspberry Pi. In scrape configs, we give a job name called Raspberry Pi Otel, although you can honestly call it whatever you want. And for the static configs, we are pointing to our Raspberry Pi's IP address that we got from a previous step and using port 889 that Otel is serving our metrics up on. Now on to the output of the Docker Compose YAML file. We have two services we have defined, Prometheus and Grafana. Prometheus is our metrics database and API. It'll scrape the Raspberry Pi and serve the queries to Grafana. Grafana is then our dashboard and visualization tool. That's where we'll get the pretty graphs from. Both containers have their ports exposed to our WSL host, which under the hood allows us to open a browser to interact with them. And very importantly, both containers share a Docker bridge network we have defined, which allows the containers to communicate directly with each other by name and will make searching for our Prometheus instance very easy in Grafana, i.e. we can just do HTTP slash slash Prometheus and then the port number without having to work worry about internal Docker container network. For volumes, this part may look empty, but it actually tells Docker to create a persistent volume cred called Grafana Data, and Grafana writes all dashboards and settings to varlib Grafana, and we map that to this volume. So even if we delete the recreate the container, our dashboards will still persist and be there. Heading over to our browser at address localhost port 9090 brings us to our Prometheus dashboard. We can see a single endpoint, which is our Otel metrics coming from our Raspberry Pi, and two labels, the instance, which is our Raspberry Pi IP and the Otel port with the job name, Raspberry Pi Otel, that we defined in our Prometheus YAML file. We can also see that the state of our instance is up. This is important as we'll know that the metrics are being collected actively and will be working. And then as you can see, if I keep refreshing the page, our last scrape time will change and it'll be refreshed over and over and over. And within that five second interval, it'll tell us when the last scrape time and it'll change as we refresh because different scrape times will have occurred since last scrape. What's also cool, if we click on the endpoint URL itself, it will show us the live metrics that are being scraped every time. And we can see in that view, the raw statistics that are coming into Prometheus. Now we can move on to the fun part, pretty graphs with Grafana. Also in our browser at localhost 3000, we're presented with the Grafana login page, and we can use the admin admin credentials to log in. It will also prompt us to update our password. We can skip this for now because this is just a demo and a home lab exercise, but in the real world, we would absolutely 110% want to change those credentials to avoid security threats. Now that we're logged into our Grafana dashboard, we want to go and add a connection of our Prometheus data. To do this, we're going to go over to data sources, add a data source, then we're going to click on Prometheus. In the field where it says connection, we're going to put HTTP Prometheus 9090. And then as we can see, we have a bunch of other configuration options that we can adjust, include our interval behavior, including our scrape interval of five seconds, which will match what we configured previously in our Prometheus config. And then we can go down to save and test, and we'll want to see that it says successfully queried the Prometheus API. This means we're good to go to start graphing things. We'll be using a basic pre-made dashboard I've laid out. So we'll go to dashboards and then we'll go over and click on create dashboard. Then we'll do import dashboard. We'll discard the existing unsaved dashboard. And then we're going to import the JSON file that I'll include in the link down below in the description. Once we see our dashboard imported, we can see the name is Raspberry Pi monitoring. It'll be in our folder dashboard and you'll have a unique identifier. This is helpful if we had all kinds of other dashboards and we had multiple Grafana installs that we we're trying to keep track of. For now, the default UID 
idea is fine. We can hit import. And here we are presented with our dashboard for monitoring our Raspberry Pi. Right now, my stats look pretty flat because I haven't been doing much on my Raspberry Pi recently, but it covers the memory use percent, both as a time series and as a gauge, CP usage, both as a percentage and a time gauge. And it also has the network throughput and bytes in both RX and TX bytes, which is in bytes per second. And it has the IO operation performed on our disk, our SD card in this case, and the Raspberry Pi, both in read and write operate. Now, don't worry, these graphs are going to seem pretty flat and boring right now, but we're going to show through the magic of the stress app that these graphs will move and we can accurately monitor our Raspberry Pi. To simulate a workload on a Raspberry Pi that's really going to make those Grafana graphs dance and jump and we can see it monitor in real time, we're going to install Stress NG. That's the next generation of the Stress tool that will allow us to stress the CPU, memory, disk I.O. all at once. We'll also be installing WGET. This way we can do a download simultaneously and this will be able to see our TXRX for our network bytes happen and we can see the real time download speed as well. Now to make all this activity happen on our Raspberry Pi, in the stress ng command we will utilize four CPU cores, allocating 75% of our memory, writing temp files to the disk, and our I.O. workers will repeatedly perform read and write operations, stressing the disk even further, and the wget command will download a 2 gigabyte file to generate network activity for us to see and monitor. When we go ahead and hit enter to run it, we can see stress ng is running, we can also see wget is starting our download. Let's hop into Grafana. In Grafana, with Stress NG running and importantly auto refresh set, so it'll refresh every five seconds, we can see that our CPU usage quickly reaches 100%, both in the gauge and fast ramp up time in our time series graph. And for our memory, it spikes to about 80% before a dip, and on the gauge, maxes out at about 85%, which is to be expected. And since we're downloading, our TX stays low and our RX reaches about 20 to 25 MBS on average. In disk IO, way more writes are being done than reads, which isn't surprising, and reaching as high is 82 I.O. operations per second. And there you go, a full observability stack running on a Raspberry Pi. Real-time metrics, modern tooling, and all of that just from three Docker containers. If you enjoyed this project, also check out my SNMP monitoring video. This is where my monitoring journey started. Remember to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, let me know down below. I'm always happy to answer them. I've been Sam the Engineering Man, and I'll catch you all in the next one.